All right, let's go ahead and move on to the big stuff here. Now, let's go to our projectiles, and we will open our slime at minion projectile. Okay. So, let's start at the top. There's a lot of code to go through here. So, we got our usings, of course, at the very top. Uh, now, hopefully, at this point, you have your item and your buff. So, you can, or I would actually recommend probably just creating all of these .cs files before coding. That way, you can just, uh, you know, implement it or type it in like I did in the items over here. And then once you actually have it coded, then it'll work. But let's just go back to our projectile for now. So we got all our usings and we got our namespace here in our projectiles folder. And we're creating a new type that is derived from mod projectile, which just means we're creating a projectile uh, inherit that inherits from the mod projectile class. I actually would really like to go over um, derived classes and inheritance at some point because it's something that I think a lot of people get a bit confused by. But uh, I've set this up. Uh, quite decently, but right at the top here I've done a little bit of organization to make it a little bit more readable and that way people can kind of go in and uh, Edit some of these values themselves to get something that they think looks nice But just know that these control the uh, way that the minion will be moving I, I've edited these to find something that is pretty decent and you can obviously change these to whatever you want I mean, it's pretty straightforward, like speed is speed of the minion. Inertia is kind of just like, how long is the, the minion going to be moving after it moves in a certain direction? Because you might notice that there's kind of like that friction feel to a minion when it's like swaying left and right and stuff like that. Uh, and then a bunch of other things just to, to help, you know, like attack site, distance, and then the range it will light on. But you know what, you can go ahead and mess with those yourself later. So public override void sets static defaults. So we're actually going to be setting up an animated uh, minion here because, well, It'd be kind of boring if you just had a single frame, right? So right here, this was going to determine the number of frames in a projectile. This is how you do it. Main.projframes of this type, and we're giving it two frames. And now, this is where we actually have to be a little bit careful. This is where we have the minion-specific things. So right here, projectile ID dot sets dot minion targeting feature, projectile dot type equals true. So this allows you to uh, right-click to have your minions target something, which I don't know if that's, I think that's a 1.4 feature, but you can add this there if you want that. I would probably recommend doing that. It seems to be a pretty important feature. And this will denote whether or not this is a pet or a minion. I actually have this set to true right now, but it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. I'm sure there's some code somewhere in Terraria that will reference uh, only pets, but I would probably just you know, set that to false if it's a, a, a minion, right? You want to probably set that to false. So we can set that to false. And then down here we have our projectile ID dot sets dot minion sacrificable. Um, so this just means that say when we have three minion slots, like max minion slots, and we want to summon another one. Well, we want it to actually summon on our cursor, right? Because maybe we want to do some extra damage. Uh, so what this will do is it will sacrifice one of those minions and it'll spawn the new one on the cursor. Uh, that's all that, that does. And then right here we have sets.cultus is resistant to. And this is kind of important <laughs> if you want to uh, make, you know, a summoning item that doesn't kill the cultus and spawn those nasty pillars into your world. That would be pretty darn annoying. Okay, so let's scroll down now into our set defaults. So we got pretty standard things. Make sure your tile collide is set to false if you don't want to collide with tiles, right? This is actually pretty important because uh, if you have this set to true, then, well can't really go through walls so that's that's a problem and then down here we have the minion weapon specific lines of code we want to make sure it is friendly doesn't hurt the player and we're going to set a minion to true this uh, this has very 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 many effects i mean imagine if you were making a, a game or an engine framework and you had a, a projectile class member called minion which is a boolean whether or not it's a minion true or false you'd probably use that in a lot of places so it just makes common sense that this would have a lot of effect on your minion you can actually try messing around with this and see what happens when you set this to false i'm sure it would probably change the ai quite a bit uh, okay projectile that damage type equals damage class dot summon you know obviously we want to do that and then we're going to say minion slots equals one f so the player has max minion slots right but each minion also has minion slots so if you set this to five, it means that you can have five of this minion that will only count for one actual minion slot, which it, it can be pretty cool. Like for example, uh, there's the what's the the twin the twins one? It's like the the retinizer one that spawns both the the spasmatasm and the retinizer. That's an example of this. They probably use two for this. And then we have projectile dot penetrate equals negative one, and that will make sure. Uh, that when we cloud with the tile or with an enemy, we don't destroy the minion because that would be kind of crazy. Um, unless you want like a suicide minion. That could be kind of a cool concept, actually. Anyways, 
right here, we're gonna make sure that we cannot cut tiles. So that means we can't like destroy grass and stuff like that, because that would be pretty annoying. Uh, could you imagine if every time you, you know, spawn a minion, just cut all the grass around you, that would, that would kind of suck. Uh, and also mushroom farms too. If you want to make something like most minions, right, then you probably want to have this return true. But if you don't, just have return false. But for my minion, I want this to deal contact damage. All right, so now let's go ahead and check out the AI. So we're going to get the player owner here, and we're going to check if it's active. If it's not active, then we don't really want to update the AI, right? Then we call four of these functions here, and I'll talk about what these are in the moment because we actually make these ourselves. And speaking of these functions, let's go to the first one right here, private bool check active. So you might have noticed we have this if check active here, which returns true or false if the player is currently active or not. Uh, and we make that right here. Now, granted, it is probably a good idea to separate some of this logic out into other code files and then use those as kind of like uh, helpers that you can have anywhere in your code. But for the time being, we're going to have this in here. But just know that a, a private function is something that you can only use within the scope um, that you're coding in, which in this case is our class. What this does is it just checks if our player is dead or not. And then if it is, well, we're going to obviously return false because our player is dead. And whenever our player dies, we want to get rid of our minion. And so we're going to set our time left equal to 2. And that will make sure that after literally one tick, which is like a 60th of a second, so basically instantaneous, our minion will die as our player dies. And that's all that does. So let's collapse that real quick. Okay, now next we have our general behavior. So this is kind of where a lot of the, the code lies. You can see it gets pretty heavy over here. We're only about halfway through. So let's expand this real quick. All right, so we're getting an idle position. Now we want to idle kind of above our player's head, right? So we're just setting the, we're offsetting the Y by 48 pixels. You can do this however much you want, uh, but that's kind of up to you. And then you also have to make sure that your minion uh, doesn't aim, kind of like, you know how minions will just randomly move around uh, or kind of like not, not in line with the other minions, if that makes sense? Well, all this is doing is it's just kind of offsetting it. Uh, based on the uh, direction that we're looking in. So that way, if we're going right, it'll kind of offset itself to go behind the player. And if we're going left, it'll go to the right of our player. A lot of this stuff has been has been adapted from example mod, which is why you can see all the comments here. I decided th there's no reason to not have the comments here. Uh, it just is very helpful for you know people who want to kind of understand what's going on. And next, all we're doing here is if our minion is too far away from our player, then we're going to teleport it back to our player. And you can see the distance is very crazy. It is 2,000 pixels, which is actually larger than the screen. Uh, but that just makes sure that we don't have our minion going like to the end of the world, trying to like chase an enemy, because that would be kind of crazy. Let's also talk a little bit about the owner. So the owner is a of type player, and the player class has a, a variable that keeps track of how many projectiles that the player currently owns. And we can use that to see, okay, well, is this projectile owned by this player? And if so, maybe we can do special things, right? That's kind of how also PVP would work too. And if that player dies from that projectile, it'll then check the owner's name and it'll be like, oh, player was killed by so-and-so. And that's how you would kind of do those death messages, um, which is why you're seeing all of this like owner dot who am I and things like that. That just kind of gets the ID uh, of the player and main.myplayer returns the current active player. So that's just saying, oh, okay, well, is the player that we're checking the owner of this projectile? Uh, and if they match and if the distance is greater than 2000, then we will set our minion uh, back to where our player is. Okay, and next we want to make sure that our minions kind of line up uh, in, in a correct line. So if there are three minions, there will be one, and then the other one will be behind it, and so on and so forth. So over here we have an overlap velocity, which will just uh, kind of offset it a little bit. And what we do here is we loop through, with a for loop here, the uh, max projectiles, and then we check if the other projectile is of this type, right? And if it is, then we'll just kind of offset it a little bit. And you can see this is a pretty long if statement. Uh, if you want, you can also do stuff like this to make it more readable. You can just have it, uh, you know, be in two lines. This just might make it a little bit less annoying on the eyes. Uh, but if you're going to do it like that, you probably would just have each separate case on a separate line. That way, it's just a little bit more consistent. But that's all that this is doing. It's just making sure that none of the minions overlap each other when they're idling or moving around. They just kind of line up. Okay. Now, now that we have that done, that is one of the uh, private functions, or I guess two. That was the general behavior and check active. Okay, next we have the search for targets. 
and this is going to be our kind of targeting AI here. So it takes in a player owner, a out bool found target, and then the distance from the target. And our distance from the target is our attack site, which if you remembered, it was this variable up here. It is basically how far until our minion will begin to aggro on someone. And then we have our target center, which is just the position of this current projectile. It's pr pretty straightforward. And then we have whether or not we found a target, which we set to false by default. There seem to be a lot of edge cases when it comes to creating a minion, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, I feel like, you know, for, for something like Terraria, the interface should maybe be a little bit cleaner. Um, but maybe, I guess you can just do this once. Like I said, separate this logic out into a separate file and then just reuse all this whenever you want to, uh, you know, make a new mini projectile. Just have it all possibly uh, and inherit. But then again, different minions and different summoning items have different AIs, and so it's all very specific. Granted, you probably could do projectile.clone defaults. That might also work for getting something very basic up and going, but I don't know how much you could customize it without doing all this yourself, um, which is a little bit annoying. If we have not found a target, then we will loop through all the NPCs and we check if they can be chased, and if they can be chased, then we will set our target to that uh, NPC. And you can see there's this line right here which will just check if we can actually uh, collide with that NPC. It does a little bit of ray casting here to check if there's you know no like collidable tiles in the way or something like that, so you don't get really weird behavior. Uh, but that's all that that's doing basically. And then down here we check if it's closest in range, so that way it only targets the closest NPC that it found. Right? We don't want to have it like randomly jumping from far NPCs or targeting the farthest one. Or maybe that's a feature. Right, maybe you want to make some kind of cool summoning uh, option that allows you to target like the farthest enemy instead of the nearest one, or maybe the strongest enemy instead of the nearest one. You could just say if the get give some kind of number of the max health of the enemy, and if that one has the most health, then you target that one instead. Next, we set the friendly equal to found target, and the reason for doing this is because what if we have some kind of dummy, right? Uh, found target is just a boolean, so whenever we find a target, uh, suddenly our projectile becomes friendly and it will be able to attack the enemies. Else, if it is false, then we cannot attack uh, dummies or anything else that you know shouldn't really be targeted onto. And it's kind of like a, a neat way of, of fixing one of those problems there, since we already have a boolean that we check uh, and set to true or false over here. <laughs> We're very, very close to being done. Next, we have the movement. Uh, all right, so movement here. If we found a target, then we're gonna go and actually move towards that target. And right here, dead zone range, which is the thing I created up there. Uh, that just kind of checks, you know, we don't want to move towards the enemy if it's like a few pixels or like colliding with it kind of in a way. Otherwise, you get really a uh, uh, jerky movement and you don't you don't want that. Okay, and then we get a vector in the direction of the enemy. So that way we can then move in that direction of the enemy and kind of chase it. Just uh, a little bit of math here. Gets the vector in the direction, normalizes it, multiplies it by speed, and then sets our velocity in that direction. Okay, else if we have not found a target then we just want to idle around, right? So we're going to check if our distance to idle position is greater than uh, attack site. Um, so say that we have lost our target and we are far away from the player because we've been attacking. That means we want to go back to our player. We want to return to them. And so that's what this does right here. We set our speed equal to the far speed, which is why I called it far speed at the very top, and our inertia equal to the far inertia at the very top. And when we get close to the player, we want to slow it down and give it a uh, less inertia and less of a speed. Then we have our if our distance is greater than our idle range. Next, we have the distance and our idle range. Now, this just saying distance to idle position greater than idle range is just saying if we're in within our idle range, which is 40 pixels of our player or 40 pixels above our player's head, kind of like a, you can think of it as like a dead zone, I guess, uh, then we'll just kind of idle around in that position. And that's all that this does. It's just like our movement. We just uh, normalize the position, multiply it by speed, and set the velocity. And finally, for our movement, if our velocity is ever zero, we want to give it a little poke, because uh, otherwise we're not going to be able to move, because we're multiplying it by speed, right? And anything multiplied by zero, it's just going to be zero. So if there's ever a case where it's not moving, which probably shouldn't really be happening, uh, this will just kind of, like the comment says, this was taken from example mod, it'll just give it a, a little poke. Okay, awesome. And that is our movement done. So let's go ahead and collapse that. Last, we have our visuals. This one is more straightforward. This is just for animating our projectile and giving it lighting and things like that. Uh, right here, this will kind of uh, make our projectile rotate towards the way it's moving. So it's like a slight lean in the direction that it's going. 
uh, projectile's velocity dot x. Remember, velocity is positive when it's going right, negative going left. So if we multiply it by a small value, it'll set the rotation when it's going left to kind of like tilt to the left. But when it's going to the right, it'll multiply by a positive number, and so it'll tilt more to the right direction. Okay, great. And then we have this uh, simple loop here, which will just uh, go through all the frames of our projectile and animate based on the frame speed. So the greater the frame speed, the uh, slower your animation. That's because this is kind of like the ticks, right? How many ticks until the next frame? So the more ticks until the next frame, obviously, the uh, slower the animation is going to be. And this is how you do it. It's pretty straightforward. The projectile has a frame counter class member that you can just increment right here. And if it's greater than or equal to 8, then we will add a frame. And if it's greater than the number of frames that we've defined at the very top here, which was 2, then we'll set it back to 0. So we just have the animation looping. And then down here, we give our projectile lighting by calling lighting.addLight. This gives us a very basic white color, but you can give whatever color uh, you want, or maybe you just want to get rid of this in total, which I'm going to do for my item. Okay, and that is all for our minion. This code is available uh, over on my GitHub. It mostly is just kind of like an adapted version, uh, at least the projectile, an adapted version of the um, example mod for the minion. So things like uh, the private functions, you'll find pretty much all of these uh, on the example mod. And they're just kind of slightly modified to look a little bit nicer. And that way you can, you know, kind of control the uh, properties of your minions up here without having to deal with all of the code that's below there. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel, um, although reinventing the wheel can, you know, expose problems and will help you learn a lot. Uh, when it comes to, you know, modding something that's already existing, there's really no reason to make something from scratch, especially when there's so many edge cases uh, that you have to think about and that could potentially be problems. So it's perfectly fine to go and, you know, and use reference code to at least kind of get an idea of what you're supposed to do. But yeah, definitely go ahead and check out the GitHub if you want to reference these code files. All right, awesome. So now that we have that done, we can finally go into Terraria and build our mod. Let's build it and make sure that none of the changes we made uh, had any errors. Okay, it looks like it's good. Let's build and reload now. All right, great. All right, here we are. We have ourselves the living slime staff. Summons a living slime to protect you. 14 summon damage and has a green rarity. And we have on our beheaded gear. So let's go ahead and use this and see what happens. All right, there it is. You can see uh, that is our minion here, and we can summon several of them if we want. Um, and they're kind of just hovering over our body. You can see they, uh, you know, they kind of go in a line together. They idle around us, but when we spawn an enemy in, uh, they immediately go and attack that enemy, which is exactly what we wanted. So you can see they'll chase it. The speed is set to fairly slow because you know it's a basic uh, uh, minion but we can definitely change it to be whatever we want. Also, this is a pretty strange summon item you can think of. They're just floating slimes. There's no particles or anything, which by the way, would not be hard uh, to add over in our AI, which wherever that was right here, we can just say things like, uh, I don't know, dust.newDust, and then create some dust in there with whatever parameters uh, you want to use. And then you could have some cool, maybe, maybe when it's only when it's attacking or targeting something, you could have like a, a dust effect. Oh, look at this. They're going to kill their own friend. Wow, does that count as cannibalism? Or wait, no, they didn't eat them. That doesn't make sense. All right, but uh, there you go. That is how you can create a minion in Terraria. And you can see why I put off this video for so long. Uh, it probably took me about 40 minutes of recording this. And because it is so long, I might just have to split this up into two parts. One for the item and buff, and then one for the projectile. But once again, thank you all so much for watching. If you want to support my content, which I would greatly appreciate uh, taking these videos, especially the longer ones like this, uh, takes quite a lot of time and effort. Uh, and if you also want to support my game that I'm currently making called Earthward, which by the way, if you join the Discord, we are doing a playtesting session uh, later in the beginning of June, I think like three weeks from now. Uh, but if you want to be a part of that or just kind of watch the people playtest it, you can join the Discord with the link in the description, or you can become a Patreon supporter to get some special access to exclusive content, as well as access to early developer builds of Earthward, uh, among some other things too that are coming in the future. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.